Hey friends, welcome back. Now, before we continue creating additional measures, let me actually press Ctrl S to my report just to save it one more time. Okay, so now let's actually explore a few more additional DAX measures and a few pitfalls you might see and how to solve them. So, we created the total sales so far. So far, so good. Now, let's have a look at the total cost. Now, if I take a closer look, let's go to the data view and have a look. And let's actually select the sales table here. How do we calculate the cost? Because for the, uh, well, total sales, we can simply multiply the quantity times the price, right? And both of these columns are inside the sales table. So this is not an issue. However, the cost itself is actually not inside the sales table, but it's inside the products table. So if I click on product, you see that here we have a cost column in here. Now, in order to figure out the cost for each of the products in our sales table, we would of course then have to go inside the sales table first. Then we take a look at the quantity again for each row in the sales table, figure out what is the quantity in here. And then we multiply this quantity times the cost based on, in this case here, the product ID we have, right? So we need to go in here, quantity is one, product ID here is PID 2077. And then we need to look up inside the products table, the specific product ID, if I scroll down, 77, which would be in here, this one, right? And then we need to go in here and say, okay, the cost is 424 multiplied by one because that was the quantity and then we derive at the cost. And at the end, the same as for the total sales, of course, we need to sum this up for each individual row inside the sales table, right? To create a measure or to figure out the total cost. So how do we do this? Well, let's actually do that using a measure. Go to report view. And because we got our measures table here, I simply right click on the table here and say, I'd like to create a new measure. You can also select the table first in here. And then if you go in here, to click new measure, then the measure also gets created inside the measures table. It's up to you. So let me right click here and say new measure. Here we go. And I will name this measure my total cost. Just to be consistent of total sales, I also have total cost. Now if I say equal, and now I want to actually do the same, remember, iterating, so going row by row through a table, means we need to use the sum x function again. So an iterator function. So I can type in some x as we've done before for the total sales. And an iterator function means at first I need to give it a table. The table will be the sales column. So I type in sales, press the tab key to select it. That's fine. And now for the expression. Well, if I search for quantity, as I've done the same for, for the total sales, we have done this together. Of course, we can search for that and we can press the tab key and select it. Or you can type it yourself if you want using sales and then the brackets and then quantity. So that's fine. But now, if I try to multiply this here by the cost, so if I search for cost, you see that Power BI is not able to find it. There is no cost. It just gives me here a lot of DAX measures or expressions which are available in here, not measures, but expressions, but it can't find the specific column cost from the products table. And the reason is exactly because currently we iterate over the sales table. Now, in order to get the cost from the products table, we need to tell Power BI then that it should look up the cost in a different table. And we can do this because we have a relationship between those two tables. The sales table, remember, in the model view is connected to the products table. And that is why we can go in here and use another Power BI expression, which is called related. The first one here, related. Now related, let me just remove this one here. You can see here returns a related value from another table. And this works because we have a relationship. So related is a keyword for, in this case, tables with have a relationship. So with related, I can now refer to cost. And if I search for cost, you see that now I get here product cost. So even if it's another table, the column I can reference here because I'm using here the related keyword. 
So then I can select it, like here, product cost. I can close this now. And then I can also close the second parenthesis to close my expression. So this now tells Power BI, iterate through the sales table. So go row by row through the table. S look up the quantity. Then go to the sales table, uh, sorry, the product table here. Search for the related cost, which can be identified because each row in the sales table has a product ID, which then links to the product table. And then this can be multiplied. So let's actually evaluate that. Let me press enter for the total cost. And you see that we get our measure. We don't get any issues, so far so good. And now if I select the total cost here as well, I just want to make sure that this is also US dollars. So select the dollar symbol in here. That's fine. And now let's actually add this maybe to our, in this case, our table. So let me make this bigger in here. And then let me actually add also the total cost either by drag and drop that inside or simply click on the checkbox. It's up to you. And now you see we got numbers here as well, right? Uh, which is 263,000 and so on. And in total, we got an amount of 17,370,000 for the total cost. So that's how that works. Okay. Very important. You can refer to other columns in this case using, go on here, total cost, using the related keyword in this case. And the related keyword, one additional thing, I like to mention that, works because the cost here is on the one side of the relationship. So let me go back to the model view here. And you see that here, the product, let me scroll in here, the product here is on the one side of the relationship from the sales table. And that's why we can use the related keyword to refer to the product, in this case, the cost column from here. Also, if I scroll to the right, maybe you've seen this, there is our measures table. So the table we have created, you can drag and drop it, play it, uh, place it somewhere, it's up to you, make it bigger. But you'll see that the measures table itself has no relationship to any of the other tables, which is of course fine because it only is a, a kind of a box or a, a grouping here for all the measures, which are referring to other columns we have used, but itself, it has no relation to any of the tables. That's why the measure table itself will always be a single table without any relations but still visible here inside um, the model view and can also, of course, be, uh, if you click on the eye, also hidden inside the report view if you want to do that. So let's get back to the reports and we have our total cost. So far, so good. And of course, let's actually maybe calculate a few additional measures here. So let me right click on the measures table here and create a new measure. So let's calculate here the total profit together. And let's say we keep it simple. The total profit profit is simply, in this case, total sales minus total cost. And a great thing is that you can also calculate with measures. That means if I say I want to use total, in this case, sales, you can see it here from the measures table, total sales. And I can simply subtract here using the minus here. And then I'm referring to the total cost. So if I search for total cost, I can press the tab key and then I can simply uh, yeah, subtract those two values. I can press enter and then I get my total profit here as well. And let's have a, a look here. Make this maybe a little smaller here. Let's go in here, click on total profit. And first need to select the table first, uh, click on total profit in here. And then you see that you got also total profit in here, which is not formatted. So let's actually select the total profit first and then also get, go to dollar symbol in here just to have a proper format. And if you want, you can now calculate yourself but you'll see that uh, here, this total sales minus total cost will get you exactly the total profit value in here. Or in this case, 25 minus 17 would be those eight point something million. And that is how that works. So you can not only create measures based on columns and so on in the model, you can also then subtract and work with measures directly like we've done in here. And let's also calculate maybe the profit margin. So let me right click on the measures table one more time. Let's go to new measure and then let's calculate the margin. So of course, let's call this uh, profit margin, profit margin is equal to, and you can of course now simply use uh, something like uh, total profits, total profits and divide it by total sales. So like that, you could do that, that will work. However, 
best practice, it would be to use the so-called divide function to do that. And I'm going to show you why. This uh, expression here can, of course, lead to issues if you have for certain kinds of uh, reasons, for instance, a total profit, you would have a profit, but no sales. It's uh, kind of difficult for this specific, uh, let's say, division, but there could be the case that you have a numerator, but no denominator. And if you divide by zero, you get an error, right? And to avoid this, you can, instead of doing it this way, you can do it following. Let's actually remove this and say divide. Here the divide function. And you say it needs a numerator, denominator, and you can also specify an alternate result. But the main point is safe divide function with ability to handle divide by zero case. So you don't get any errors if you divide and uh, you don't have a denominator. That's the main point here. And if you use divide function here and use again the total profit, total profit here, and as a denominator, we will use the total sales, total sales. And you can specify an alternate result. In this case, I just leave it blank. You don't have to do it. You still uh, avoid the division by zero error. But now if I press enter to create the profit margin, you see that this measure is now available. And if I select it first and make sure I want to see this as a percentage number here, select the percentage. And now also let me select the table first and then click on the option here to add it to our table. And now we can see here also the percentage figure as a profit margin here for each of the products here, as well as at the bottom here for the total, right? Of course, you can also um, use this in order to display it as a card visual or of course in another chart. Like as I said, you can easily switch this instead of showing a table, you can use any other kind of visual. The only reason why I chose here a table is because I think with explaining, it's best to see and most easiest to see if you have a table first. But of course you can use those measures you have created here for any other kind of visualization. So might be a donut chart, a line chart, if you have something uh, over time you want to analyze over time, or use a bar chart, or use a map, whatever you want to use, feel free to do that, right? And now you know how to apply and create those measures in here. So uh, that's it actually for this video. Hopefully you understood what we did and I encourage you to try this out yourself. Thanks a lot for watching and hopefully see you in the next video. Until then, best guys.